Hey everybody, I'm super excited today because one of the decks that I have been long on the hunt for in its vintage form has been recently re-released in a new, larger, and borderless format. That is the Ancestral Path Tarot. Hey Tarot Tribe, it's Dustin from A Modern Metaphysic Man, and today I thought we could hang out and take a trip through the Ancestral Path Tarot by Julie uh, Kuchia Watts. I think that's how you say that. Probably not, so I'm super sorry if I butchered that. Um, Kuchia, Kuchia, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But by Julie C. Watts, and it is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful deck. I've been looking for this deck um, in its vintage format for some time now, and I just really haven't found one that was either in good enough quality or at a reasonable price that I wanted to um, get it. And then I found out that US Games was reprinting it this year um, in this new larger and borderless edition, and I was so excited. So as soon as this went up on US Games' website, I immediately purchased it. Um, I got it along with the Crow Tarot, which I'll also be doing a review of soon. So make sure, as always, that you hit the subscribe and the like button um, and that little bell so you can stay tuned for all of the yummy tarot decks we're going to explore um, in the future. Um, so let's dive into this beautiful deck. Um, it comes in uh, a standard sort of tuck box, which I was a little disappointed by because the Crow Tarot came in this really lovely two-piece box. Um, the tuck box isn't uh, terrible. It, it is a sturdier cardboard, so it's kind of like hold up well, but um, it's a tuck box. <laughs> And for uh, an oversized deck especially, I would have really preferred to have a two-piece box, but um, it is what it is. So it comes in a tuck box. It comes also with a, a decent little guidebook um, that is full of um, information about the deck. Um, the deck itself being called the Ancestral Path Tarot, as you can see, uh, references some um, of the major sort of cultural civilizations that have existed on Earth, right? Um, the suits themselves reference these cultures and their legends, um, which I think is really cool. And the suits actually tell the story of the legends. And then the major arcana um, kind of has a little bit of a mixture of of cultures um, represented, which is really cool. So before we dive into this, I'm gonna gr jump into the book really quickly here um, and talk about the suits. So the central myths or le are legends of these racial groups serve as the backdrop, backdrop to each suit and trace paths our ancestors forged in shaping their worldview. In the sword suit, a woman's epic song details the um, Anu people's relationship with their bear god and defines relationships between men and women, clans and tribes. And it uh, is representative of the Japanese culture. So I'm probably saying that name wrong as well, and I apologize if I am. <laughs> um, the Osirin myth cycle of death and resurrection weaves through the staves, so Egyptian. The Arthurian, Arthurian and Grail mythos is uh, the stage for the Kapsu, um, so that should be very common to a lot of people. Um, and then in the suit of the sacred circles, which is the uh, pentacles or coins suit, um, uh, it is a legend of uh, bear and thunder spirit ancestors um, and Winnebago holy uh, medicine song. So uh, more of a Native American um, culture, which I just think is really cool. Um, and then each of the court cards actually represent characters from uh, those legends and those cultures. So it's really well thought out. It's really well executed. Um, you know, I don't think it's culturally appropriative at all. It's just, it's really beautiful. Um, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So let's dive in and take a look at the cards. Um, so you get a couple of these little, um, title cards. This one, uh, says the ancestral path tarot 
by Julie C. Watts threads together uh, d diverse beliefs of various cultures in order to find commonalities of experience between them. It examines the traditions of our ancestors through mythology to reclaim a personal spirituality that enables us to perceive the divine in ourselves and in others. The Ancestral Path Tarot emphasizes the living tradition of all human cultures for us to factor into our worldview. The deck portrays paths created by ancestors of different times and cultures for our consideration. So I just thought that was a really well written um, sort of introduction to the deck, which is why I chose to read it. I don't often do that, um, but I just think it really speaks well to the intention of uh, the creators of this deck and I just think it's it's just really well done and very tasteful so we have our full card which I believe is a self portrait of the artist uh, in front of her her deck here on the table which is wonderful um, the backs uh, are the same design that are represented here in the image and the cardstock is um, that nice standard um, US games cardstock so it's a really nice cardstock and as you've probably noticed, the cards are not your typical <laughs> tarot size or shape. They're in fact very large. Um, this is a vintage uh, uh, writer tarot deck full card uh, from the 1971 writer. Um, and as you can see, <laughs> it is um, the the ancestral path tarot is quite a bit larger, which is really wonderful i love it i think it really um does justice to julie's artwork which is just breathtaking it's so beautiful um so we have the full card here which is um again i think i believe to be a self-portrait um and then we have our magician which is really wonderful in the cave i love that the infinity symbol is like uh cave art um, you know, and on here you have the, the different tools as well as representations of the um, cultures we're going to dive into in the suits, right? So you have almost a drum, a Native American drum here for the coin. You have um, an Egyptian style scepter for the wands, a katana for the swords, and um, a, you know, sort of traditional... Uh, cup here from you know Arthurian sort of British mythos um, and then you also have representations on the altar here of the uh, astrological zodiac which is wonderful um, so yeah it's just this whole deck is just it's so very well thought out the images are so beautifully illustrated and they also hold a lot of symbolism not only in the traditional you know tarot sense but in in uh these cultures and these mythos you know there's a lot of symbolism woven into the images which is amazing so we have our high priestess here um which is more of a traditional rws depiction but you know she has the scroll but here she also has this uh this piece of paper draped over her lap, which uh, has the Kabbalic uh, Tree of Life on it. But if you look closer, there are actually Egyptian hieroglyphs in the Kabbalic Tree of Life, which is just its really interesting. So there's tons of, you know, layered symbolism within this deck. You have the Empress. The Emperor. And we have the Hierophant, which I believe is a depiction of the Oracle of Delphi, which I just think is wonderful. Or even perhaps um, the three uh, mistresses of, or goddesses of fate, um, the spinners of the String of Life. The Lovers. The Chariot. Justice is a really really cool justice card and i love that justice is blind this hermit card is the card that i actually first saw from this deck that i was like i have to have this deck um i love 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 that the star in the sky is his lantern i love that he is sort of spilling stardust out of his hand 
um, it's just it's so so beautiful and it's perfect like this is probably my absolute most favorite hermit card our wheel of fortune which is uh, the zodiac wheel which is really cool and as you know I love astrology so that stood out we have strength just beautiful card the hanged man or the hanged one which is um, and uh, a baby in the womb, which I just thought was such a really cool, interesting, different take on this card. Death, a beautiful death card. Temperance, the devil, the tower, the star, moon, the sun, very beautiful, you know, Egyptian um, depiction of the sun, very, you get that, you know, that energy of raw judgment. I love this, um, this depiction of judgment because there is a lot of symbolism here. You know, she's underwater, right? Uh, and and here's her bed, and then here's all these sort of different, almost dimensions, right? And she's being, you know, f pulled into this this window sill that's floating, right? And she's being pulled through it out of the water. Um, it's just, it's just really cool. The world, um, and a lot of people, um, especially if you're uh, an 80s baby like me, will probably recognize this. This is one of um, one of the more famous images of the world from the 1980s and uh, 90s. This is one of the first sort of um, images of uh, Earth to be captured. Um, it has a name and it eludes me right now, which is shame on me because I, I should know this um, from my art history class, but I just thought this was just a really wonderful inclusion um, and depiction of the world because it is the world. So then we get into our sword suit and we're starting here with the, um, the court. So we have our king of swords. And remember the, the sword suit is um, a Japanese myth. So we have our queen of swords, our prince, our princess, our 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and our ace. And if you go into the little white book, which I haven't had a lot of time to spend with, um, it is on my list of things to do, it talks about the legend in each of the descriptions of the cards um, and then the characters that are associated with the court with the mythos which is really cool and one of the things I want to do is go back um, and find um, the actual myths in written form and and just read them um, especially the ones I, I'm not familiar with like this one um, the Egyptian one and the Arthurian ones are ones that I am very familiar with, um, but the Japanese ones and the Native American ones are not. So I definitely want to do some research on those. So King of Stabs, Queen, the Prince. And can we also talk about how I love the fact that these um, these Egyptian people are not being depicted as pasty white people um i just think that's really important because um egyptian history has a uh a sort of you know long standing tradition of being whitewashed and so it's really beautiful to see these people of color depicted um traditionally in these settings, which is just, it's its wonderful to have the inclusiveness and to have the artist really um, put thought behind um, 
rendering not only these cards, but the mythology behind each of the suits, as well as the cultural significance and um, you know diverse sort of aspects of each of these cultures and mythos, which is just, it's really awesome. It's really well done. So bravo. Indeed. So our three and our two and our ace in front of the sphinx. And then we get into our cups, which again is Arthurian legend. Um, so something I am very familiar with because as a kid I was obsessed with the legend of King Arthur. Um, I read La Morte d'Arthur, um, which is, uh, I of course read it translated because I wasn't, uh, I'm still not fluent in French, I do speak a little bit, but um, the Arthurian legend is something I adore. Um, I love, oh my god, I love the fact that the Ten of Cups is Camelot. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's almost a little Avalonian, you could say, being out on this island. Um, I just love this depiction of the Ten of Cups. It's, just, it's wonderful. Our Nine of Cups. Eight. Seven of Cups, which is choice. There's Six of Cups. There are five. Four. Three. Two. And one. And then we have. Uh, the suit of sacred circles, which is again um, the Native American legend um, from I believe the Winnebago tribe uh, about um, the bear and thunder spirit ancestors. So um, beautiful native imagery. Um, you can really tell that. Uh, Julie spent a lot of time actually really researching it and um, doing it justice, right? Our 10. Oh, it's beautiful. The sense of light in this, this night scene is just amazing. 9. 8. 7. Just wonderful. Six, five, and as you can see, a lot of the minor arcana, of course, because it is depicting this these different legends, does uh, diverge quite a bit, quite significantly from the more traditional, uh, you know, Smith Rider White system. Um, so it's definitely of note to say that I would say this is more of an intermediate deck, um, not one I would I would jump into as a beginner reader, but. You know, if you're drawn to it and you and you want to, go for it. And our ace. So yeah, it's oh, it's just it's so beautiful. The artwork is so well done. The inclusions of the mythology um, and the different sort of um, you know cultures and uh, mythos. It's just it's just so wonderful and it's so well executed. And the artwork is just. Just beautiful. It has this wonderful, you know, colored pencil sort of. Mm, um, oh God, this kind of card is just my absolute favorite. Um, you know, aesthetic to it. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Um, and I'm so happy that they they did this in a in a larger borderless format because it really, really allows the art to come forward and and be center stage. The older editions, um, which I don't have, have actually rather large intrusive borders. Um, and you know, I'm I'm pretty sure you know I'm I'm so glad this came out when it did because this is just it's exquisite, um, and I couldn't be happier. So that is um, the ancestral path tarot. Um, I super appreciate everyone coming to hang out. Let me know what you think about the deck in the comments below. I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Um, 
As always, thank you, thank you so much for all of your support. Um, I am running a contest on my channel right now uh, for hitting 500 subscribers. So if you're interested in um, entering that contest, be sure to head on over to my YouTube main page. It is the featured video right now on my channel page, um, so it should be pretty easy to find. Um, so head over there and check that out if you haven't entered. Um, the entries will be open for one more week. Um, so at the end of next week, I believe, I think I said on Friday, um, all of the details are in the description. Um, I'll be closing the entries and then I'll be doing the live drawing for the winner. Um, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday on mo our Morning Metaphysics um, weekly live chat. So you can, you can come hang out and see who gets to win and some cool tarot goodies so yeah thanks everyone for hanging out and um i hope you all are having a wonderful wonderful weekend and uh we'll see you around the youtube space bye everybody